de Blanc's almost out of fuel, but he decides to stay and guard the SPDs. My job was to protect the what? The dive bombers. Now, I'm not a hero, but I have to live with my conscience. And if I didn't do what I was supposed to do, then I'm derelict my duty. Suddenly, de Blanc realizes the other Oscars have broken off their attack on the bombers and are coming after him. The Oscars dive down to swarm de Blanc and Felton. Outnumbered and under attack, the two Americans instinctively fall back on a classic defensive maneuver, the thatch weave. It's a simple but effective two-plane tactic devised during the war by naval commanders Jimmy Thatch and James Flatley. Paired up in a buddy system, the planes fly 200 feet apart. If an enemy attacks a wildcat's tail, the two American fighters will turn toward each other. If the enemy follows, it will soon be targeted by the second plane. So by turning into each other, crossing flight paths, they force that bandit to pick one fighter or the other. And once they pick that fighter, that adversary aircraft is now vulnerable to an attack by the other fighter. For de Blanc and Felton, the thatch weave works. The Oscars are unable to attack without exposing themselves to one of the Wildcat's guns. But Felton swings his Wildcat too wide and suddenly finds himself in the crosshairs of a trailing Oscar. Bullets chew into Felton's engine. The Marine kicks his wounded Grumman into a wide left turn to get out of range. He bails out. With the mutual support of the weave now gone, an Oscar dives in on de Blanc's tail. De Blanc tries to shake off the enemy, but the nimble Oscar easily stays lodged in the six o'clock position. Then de Blanc's squadron mate, Jim Seacrest, who has been with the bombers, comes to the rescue. De Blanc is here. Seacrest is here, heading straight on. He is going to streak in directly over de Blanc's canopy to get to the Oscar. Seacrest almost takes off de Blanc's tail, but the move works. The Oscar pulls away. When de Blanc looks up, both Seacrest and the Oscar are gone. I said, that's enough. I'm going home, and I couldn't understand why I'm still fighting these guys, because I'm going to be a dead man. I turned back, and I streaked for home full throttle. I don't care if you and all the guys I have left. Night is falling. De Blanc's fuel state is critical. He climbs to join the SBDs. They've delivered punishing blows to the Japanese and are heading home. But before he rejoins the bombers, he spots two more Oscars on his tail, closing fast. January 1943, the skies over Guadalcanal. Marine fighter pilot Jefferson de Blanc is in trouble. Two agile Japanese Oscar fighters are tearing in from three o'clock high. Even though he's low on fuel, de Blanc knows he must challenge the Oscars and draw them away from the American bombers. De Blanc pulls a long right climbing turn into the enemy and calls on the best tactic for his wildcat. He attacks head on. I'm the one that's climbing, and these guys are the one coming to hunt, but very shallow when they saw me to steep in the dark. And when they steep in the dark, I cut loose. And he, he blew up. I caught, I caught the pipes that said it. The whole thing blew up. The Japanese fighter disintegrates, nearly blinding de Blanc in the flying debris. His engine separated and went past me, separated and turning. Weird looking. I'd never had that before. And of course, there's nothing but debris in front of me, which I ran through. And it hit my, my prop, and it hit the wings. And it did knock me out, it did knock me out, but I still had control, and it still was running, my engine was running. 
When de Blanc regains his senses, he sees the second Oscar pulling in steeply behind him. He was looking at me as if that's a dead man I'm coming after, because I'm going to blow him right out of the sky. And when he came on down that way, we were both diving towards the sea. And I knew good well with the Grumman, there's only one protection I have, flying straight, I couldn't do it because he can overtake me. Pulling up, I couldn't do it because he had me broadside. Over here, when you pull up, then you're going to stall and come down, he can get you there. So with only one option that I have to have is the option is to fool him. De Blanc forces his Wildcat into an aerial skid. In effect, he's slamming on his brakes, trying to force the Zero to overshoot. When I skidded, then he, uh, he was coming too fast. I straightened out to just let him go. We were wingtip to wingtip. The Oscar pilot tries to duplicate the skid, leading speed to stay on the Wildcat's tail. And he fished tail, and he couldn't do it. He went right past it. I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I could recognize that man today. And you say, you crazy man. Well, when you kill some during war, and you see him, you'll witness what I'm talking about. With the Oscar now at point-blank range, a single burst destroys the fighter. It's de Blanc's fifth confirmed kill of the day. He's an ace in one afternoon. But his sense of triumph is fleeting. His eyes race over his instruments. He checks his watch. The instant I looked at my watch, a 7.7 .7 Japanese bullet came over there and knocked my wristwatch off my wrist. Well, that kind of scared me. Now de Blanc is squarely in an Oscar's sights, taking hits to his engine, prop, and cockpit. Only the Wildcat's armor plate is keeping him alive kept firing, the bullets were coming past the engine and hit, hitting at the prop area, which of course is messing my prop up. Pretty soon he hit the engine and she caught fire. Then I knew I was in trouble and I bailed out. De Blanc hits the water and swims to an enemy held island. Natives pick him up and barter him to a friendly tribe for a sack of rice. Most people cannot price out their exact amount of money they are worth. But I know exactly how much I am worth. One 10 pound sack of rice. Sack Lieutenant de Blanc is an amazing figure in marine aviation. He lives to tell this whole tale, comes back out and rightly so earned the Medal of Honor for his mission.